reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow, and he knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, and when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, and the harvest has come. He said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Francis with you on this 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, I probably would maybe entitle this little sermonette, uh, The Miracle in the Minuscule, Finding the Finding Greatness in Smallness because our readings today kind of encapsulate that theme. Let me ask you a question. What would you do if somebody came to you next week or, say, maybe tomorrow and said, I have come to hear words of wisdom from you, and I'm going to sit now and listen to what you have to say to me? How would that make you feel? Now, I'm not describing an, an anecdote from one of the world's great philosophers, nor am I talking about maybe one of the world's, uh, one of the church's great saints or mystics. <laughs> I'm actually talking about something that happened to me just this past week. Uh, I have to tell you, I was taken back when this person came and they simply said those simple words. Maybe not exactly word for word, but that was the, the context of what they came they wanted to hear words of wisdom from yours truly. <laughs> now, again, I was sitting there thinking, what in the world is this person, what do they really want? And I have to say that I felt a little disarmed. I felt a little vulnerable because I don't particularly consider myself a sage or, or a person of, of wise counsel, although I can instruct people in the faith, and maybe I can encourage people, or I can listen, or I can pray for people, and all those things are, are valuable things. But to be seen as somebody who has words of wisdom to give to somebody at that particular moment, well, I have to say I was a little bit um, taken back. I was, uh, I was a little bit put on guard. It was like I felt a little bit vulnerable, like, how am I really going to help this person? Because they've kind of set me up. <laughs> they've, they've raised the bar. And what can I do? Well, I sat and I listened. And all of a sudden, it dawned on me that I did, in fact, have words of wisdom for this person. Now, before you think I'm becoming arrogant or self-absorbed, I can explain. In fact, last week, I think I shared, at least in the public homily I gave, uh, a wonderful prayer, which I think is one of the most beautiful uh, prayers, and it's just loaded with real wisdom. And uh, so I remember, actually on two occasions now, sharing this prayer, and I'm going to share it again, even though I shared it last week, because it ties in with this whole idea of small things becoming great, or great things coming from small things. So as I sat there, kind of literally twiddling my thumbs, thinking, what am I going to say to this person? It finally dawned on me. First, I have to say, I was kind of filled with a bit of apprehension and fear, as I've kind of already stated. And I was thinking, what am I going to do? I have nothing to say. Although, personally, I probably didn't have anything to say, and that's okay. I did have something to give to this person. And again, all I needed to do 
was take a deep breath, relax, and pull out this small piece of paper. Now, I have to be honest, this isn't the exact same piece of paper that I gave this person, but it is uh, the same exact prayer that I had uh, taken and uh, printed out and put in my pocket to share at a couple of the Masses uh, that I was talking about this prayer last week. It's known as a third step prayer, and it comes to us from 12-step spirituality, from uh, groups like Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous. But I think this is one of the most beautiful prayers, and it's just chock full of real wisdom. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as you will. Relieve me of the burden of self, that I might better do your will. Take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of your power, your love, and your way of life. Amen. So after I read those words, this person sat there and they looked, wow, that's exactly what I needed to hear. And I said, and here you go. I'm going to give this to you as a little gift. And it just reminded me that sometimes... The greatest things that we can give usually don't come from, say, the mall, a department store. You know, they're not things that we buy, but they are things that we give of ourselves. And they're usually almost, they're almost imperceptible. They're almost insignificant. They're they're minuscule little things that you and I uh, carry within us all the time. And I think that Sometimes we, we, do, we do ourselves a disservice when we think that we can't help people or we can't do something, when actually uh, a lot of times people, when they're, what they're asking for isn't what we think they're asking for. A lot of times people will come and ask for things, and, and I have a misconception that they're asking for this, when actually only they're asking for something rather almost seemingly insignificant. It's like, well, why didn't you say so? I can do that. And again, I think that's the, the, the lesson today in the gospel is that great things, again, start from very small, tiny things. Even the first reading talked about taking the crest or a shoot, a green little shoot from a, a mighty tree, you know, and then taking that shoot And then taking it aloft to this great mountain to where the tree will grow taller than the tree that it originally came from. And I think that's the the lesson that I take away from these readings today is that God takes what little things that I have, but he marries them to his greatness, his power, his strength, his wealth of resources. So although people might see this little tiny little deed, this little piece of paper, it doesn't really come from me but it is built upon a great foundation uh, of God. And so today, you know, I would say, you know, again, the readings say, be of good courage, be be courageous, you know, don't hold back. Now, uh, to be sure, there's going to be times when you're going to maybe give your best and it's maybe not going to be enough, possibly. But nine times out of ten, you might uh, might be surprised that uh, what you find later in life Maybe at the time you give and you think, wow, that was kind of a waste of time. That was a waste of effort. You know, why did I, what what was I thinking? You know, that didn't help. But then you find out later that maybe uh, other things were going on. Maybe you were kind of obscured from seeing the, the, the the bigger picture. But your little contribution helped out an awful lot. So again, be of courage. You know, remember that God takes little, almost minuscule things, and he makes them into great things. May God bless you today and every day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.